Welcome back to the studio. Now it's been a few weeks since we uploaded a video and that's because we've been deep in the build out of our new creative space, this brand new studio. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe button because you're not gonna wanna miss that video when we upload it. So ring that bell too. We have a full video that is gonna go over the entire build process from the concrete to the framing, like mud tape, prime paint, everything. You won't wanna miss it. But today's video is actually about our filament wall. Now the wall itself might be new, but the brackets that actually hold up all of that weight, they are anything but. These 3D printed brackets have quietly held up every filament shelf in every studio I've built from Studio A to the old Studio B behind me, and now here in this new upgraded space. And I've really never showed them off until now. Now, I designed these brackets a few years back when I needed a clean, strong, low profile way to support a filament wall using standard multi-purpose shelves. Rather than buying hardware from a big box store, I mean, we're a 3D printing channel, of course I'm going to print them. What started out as a test turned into a long-term win. Almost all these brackets are printed in Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro, which prints just like regular PLA, but has just enough given it to behave more like PETG. It's less brittle and more forgivable under continuous load. Most of the brackets that you see here have been silently holding up hundreds of pounds of filament for over three years now. And when we finish adding the lower shelves here on the bottom, this wall will support around 11 to 1200 pounds of filament, which works out to be just about $15,000 in materials. And here is the original design. It's a simple L bracket, nothing fancy, but it is strategically reinforced and it does have mounting holes. It mounts flush to the wall with two and a half inch wood screws driven directly into the studs. And that angled brace, that's not just for looks. In terms of load paths, the shelf weight pushes straight down and the angled brace directs that load into the wall. That reduces shear force on the screws, the force that would try to bend or snap them sideways, and instead transfers that force as compression directly into the stud. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference when holding up this much weight. As I mentioned earlier, nearly every bracket here is printed in Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro. Now, I originally considered using PTG or ABS, but a conversation with the folks at Polymaker changed my mind. They suggested PLA Pro, and honestly, they weren't wrong. It's strong, tough, and it doesn't crack when tightened down with screws, even after years of use and even reinstalling many times. Each bracket took around two to four hours to print, depending, of course, upon the machine, but originally they were printed on a Prusa Mini and more recently on Bamboo Lab machines. Settings were simple, 0.2 millimeter layer heights, eight perimeters, which I know that's a lot, but you want the strength there, and 20% grid infill, and they were printed flat on the build plate for maximum strength. Here's the A1 Mini printing one of the brackets right now, and you can see that the part is oriented flat on the build plate. Now, it's a simple print, but the strength here comes from the print orientation and that perimeter count. I love this part of the process design something, slice it, and just watch it come to life. And the A1 Mini, it is a beast for small parts like this. Now, here's something to keep in mind. Print orientation matters a lot. These brackets are printed flat, which means that the layer lines are perpendicular to the wall, so they're in compression, not tension. If you printed these standing up, like vertically, you'd risk splitting right through the middle under load. Installation is pretty straightforward. Just mark your studs, get a level line, and then drive your screws. Now, I use two and a half inch wood screws into half inch drywall, but always double check your wall type and electrical before going that deep. If you're unsure, two inch screws are a little bit safer and still provide excellent support. The shelves themselves are eight inch deep Rubbermaid boards coated with what I think is some sort of a melamine finish. Now, we picked them up years ago, and, but I've seen them recently down at big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot um, on clearance. And now that I think about it, I think I was supposed to pick up some last time I was in town. Now, because these shelves were cut for earlier studios, not every joint ends on a stud. And in the new layout, that was a problem. And instead of tossing them, I thought I would maybe jump into Bamboo Studio and create some little joiner clips. They ultimately bridge the two shelves that don't meet on a bracket. It's a simple print, but it's effective. Now by linking the ends, the load is distributed across both shelves. Neither can flex independently, and that ensures that the filament stays nice and level 
and looks good across the length of the wall. Now they're not flashy, but I think they work and they make the whole wall look pretty good. What started as a couple of printed brackets turned into this, a full rainbow of Polymaker filament, organized, accessible, and entirely supported by parts that I designed and printed myself. This is what I love about 3D printing. Not just for cosplay, models, or fun toys, but real, practical, problem-solving tools that improve your space. We want our tools to work for us, and a 3D printer is absolutely one of those tools. People always ask how strong these 3D printed brackets really are. Now, I didn't do any full load tests with weights hanging off of them, but I did reach up and grab two of them and do some pull-ups, and I weigh about 140 pounds, and it handled my weight no problem. Printed correctly with the right material and mount, 3D printed parts like this can be incredibly reliable, even under constant stress. Another question I get all the time is how do we keep the spools of filament on the shelf? Well, in previous build outs, we actually had the LED light strip up, up here in front of the spools. Um, but this time around, I, I wanted to backlight them. I wanted the light to be a little bit more subtle. And so actually, if you look under here, you'll see a bead of just white caulk. And that's just a bead of caulk run across there. We just measured out from the wall, um, drew a line, and then put that bead of caulk um, all the way along there. And, uh, and that does a great job of just giving a little bit of a soft speed bump. You can see it's even soft right there, but the spools, they have the, they don't want to really roll over it. So that's how we keep them on there. Pretty awesome. And uh, yes, we do have a filament ladder in the studio, but that'll be in another video. Pretty sweet. We get to slide along this whole wall of filament on a ladder. I will have links in the description to where you can download these and print these yourselves. And if you happen to do it and make your own filament wall, tag me because I'd love to see it. Oh, and also, if you are designing your own practical prints that you use in your daily workflow that are kind of like this stuff, tag me because I want to see that too. And if you're interested in a little behind the scenes footage, all right, well, we're filming that too. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to see all of it. And uh, because we'd love to share how we actually film in the studio and make some of this fun content. Also, consider becoming a YouTube member. It would really help us out a lot. And let me give a huge shout out to Polymaker uh, for sponsoring and supporting our content here. That's an awful lot of filament and uh, we appreciate it. And of course, a special shout out to all of you YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. None of this, including the studio, was possible without you because it was an awful lot of money. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Now we get to create all sorts of awesome, fun content.